The Office of the Medical Examiner empowers Denver's communities to live better, longer by conducting independent investigations using advanced forensic science and the service of families, communities, and the criminal justice system, providing answers for those affected by sudden and traumatic loss, and helping protect the public health by contributing to education and research, increasing the public's understanding of sciences and encouraging and training the next generation of leaders in the field and by identifying risk to the public through advanced mortality surveillance and maintaining readiness to respond to all types of public health emergencies. I'm Dr. Jim Caruso. I'm the Chief Medical Examiner for the City and County of Denver. I am in charge of the Office of the Medical Examiner, so uh, I supervise uh, a staff of 23 full-time investigators, autopsy technicians, doctors and administrators, uh, I am in charge of not only certifying the cause and manner of death, but I also do forensic autopsies, and that's the difference uh, between myself and some of the other coroners. Most of the other coroners in Colorado uh, do not do autopsies because they're not physicians. The population in Denver is getting very close to 700,000, and it's a pretty young population. So uh, if you assume that about 1% of the population dies every year in a young population, uh, we're about 6,000, 6,500 deaths a year, and of those, uh, about 4,500 are reported to our office because not every death needs to be reported to the coroner's office. Deaths that are due to cancer are not unexpected. Uh, somebody's very ill in hospice care don't necessarily have to be reported to the medical examiner or coroner. Uh, that doesn't mean they don't get reported because many of them do. We hear about uh, 4,500 deaths per year. Of those, we take an active role in about 1,500 of them. A report is made on each and every one of those 4,500 deaths, but uh, in approximately 1,500, uh, some medical uh, report will be generated, whether it's a full autopsy or just an external examination or a, uh, a review of the medical records. Our office performs about 700 autopsies a year, uh, approximately three to 350 uh, external examinations a year, and uh, then a, a couple hundred of chart, a couple hundred chart reviews per year, where we don't actually bring the body in, but we review the medical record and uh, and sign out the death certificate. So uh, our workload is uh, significant, and um, uh, 700 autopsies divided amongst the uh, three doctors and the. Uh, uh, forensic pathologist in training uh, is a good number and is uh, in accordance with our accreditation organization, the National uh, Association of Medical Examiners. My name is Don Bell and I supervise the investigators here in the coroner's office, the medical examiner's office. We're notified of deaths by the Denver Police Department dispatch. They, uh, they call us and, and dispatch us out the same way they do a, a, a police officer. The office currently has eight full-time and two on-call medical legal death investigators. All the full-time investigators are American Board of a Medical Legal Death Investigation certified. Some of their main tasks include locating next of kin, respond to death scenes, obtaining medical records, assisting with identification, and contacting local co-investigative agencies, witnesses, medical facilities, in addition to the decedent's family and friends. Basically, our evidence that we collect is medications and ligature that is uh, used in uh, suicide um, hangings. About 1,500 of those cases are further investigated in collaboration with hospitals, law enforcement, court systems, and the Denver District Attorney's Office. Collected evidence is used to provide testimony in civil court and in murder trials, thereby affecting outcomes for those affected by crime. Compiled data is shared with multiple systems and jurisdictions including law enforcement, the courts, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, hospital review boards and outreach organizations such as addiction, suicide, and homeless. These statistics influence local, regional, and national policies and procedures that prevent, reduce, and address crime, thereby contributing to improvements in the policies and procedures that impact the administration of justice. 
Timely notification of family members is a high priority in helping families deal with the death of a loved one. The sooner families are notified, the sooner families can begin dealing with the death and grieving process. This task is accomplished by investigating and acquiring fingerprints, radiological x-rays, medical records, and so on. technician and forensic radiographer. We help the doctors um, do death investigations. Um, we will actually assist them with the Y incision and remove the organs for them and then they will do their, their pathology um, examination. Everything that is done at the medical examiner's office is truly done for the living, next of kin, and the loved ones who are waiting for answers while dealing with the grief of profound loss. The medical examiner's office assists in writing the last chapter of a life story, which must be accurate, comprehensive, factual, and authored with a touch of compassion. For many of these families, justice is dependent upon the answers found in this investigative process. Our job is to protect society. We look for death trends, deaths that are premature or that should not have happened so that we can go forth and correct those errors in society. I'm uh, Krista Tim. I'm a forensic pathologist and a deputy coroner medical examiner. A forensic pathologist is a medical doctor who uh, does residency training in pathology, which is the study of disease in the body and then does a further year of training uh, to determine cause and manner of death through usually an autopsy um, in which we look not only at diseases in the body but also injury to the body. So forensic pathology is uh, the, the examination of bodies to determine the cause and manner of death uh, through the performance of autopsies uh, which includes an external examination of the body and an internal examination of the body, uh, having uh, toxicology performed and uh, looking at the totality of the circumstances, so reviewing police reports, medical records, uh, to ultimately arrive at a conclusion as to why a person died. My name is Meredith Frank and I'm a medical examiner. Uh, I work as a forensic pathologist. We perform a couple of kinds of exams. The post-mortem exam could potentially just involve um, looking at the external surfaces of a decedent. We call that an external exam. Or we could do what most people consider uh, when they hear the word autopsy. We have a full autopsy, which includes the external exam in addition to the internal exam where we, we look at all the organs and viscera to include the brain and intracranial cavity. Um, there are other cases where we might simply review medical records. Um, that would be a chart review and, and we would then be able to render a diagnosis based on medical opinions that have already been established. Many things go into consideration when we decide to perform an external exam or a full autopsy. Um, most of all, we want to be able to make the best diagnosis that we can and to be able to, term, term, to determine the cause and manner of death. Um, by doing a full autopsy, we gain more information about um, the medical condition of the decedent. Uh, we may choose to do that if we need to further diagnose um, a heart problem or say um, 
take a look um, and try to find a source of seizures, for example. Um, and also, if there is an external uh, factor, say if somebody has taken um, more medication than they're supposed to, um, we want to know if there is anything in combination with that medication that may have played a role in their death. Um, same thing for patients and, and decedents who have had experience, had experienced a trauma, for example, we would then choose to do a full autopsy to be able to describe the trauma that was involved and the injuries due to that trauma. Um, in some cases, there's a very well-established medical diagnosis and no concerns for trauma or overdose, and we may very well be able to diagnose their conditions and determine a cause and manner of death with just an external examination. Uh, my name is Hannah Biddle. I'm a forensic autopsy tech intern for the summer. Um, my day-to-day -day activities vary a little bit, but for the most part, us interns help assist the doctors and the techs with um, the autopsy process. Whether it be just help cleaning or loading up blood to send to toxicology or histology. Um, so every day is a little different, but same process, we just assist with start to finish autopsies. The Denver Office of the Medical Examiner is the largest office and should be a shining beacon in education for all who would like to undergo these learning opportunities. The Office of the Medical Examiner provides the highest quality of education possible through internship and fellowship programs. They strive to instruct students in effective communication, collection, and maintenance of evidence and specimens via chain of custody, and to understand the forensic and investigative aspect of the profession. Upon completion of their internship, many of our interns become physicians, physician assistants, pathologist assistants, mortuary scientists, medical legal death investigators, and forensic autopsy technicians. Hi, my name is Heather Saltzman. I am a administrative assistant. Um, I'm scanning the case files for the office dating back to the early 1920s. I'm reading the newspaper clippings that are in the case files. Um, it gives you a perspective of what life was like dating back 50, 60, 70 years ago that you wouldn't be able to absorb yourself in otherwise. Okay, my name is Cecilia Albertson. I'm an ASA 4, which is administrative support. And I work in the front office, mainly at the front window. So I basically answer the phones, uh, complete death certificates through the electronic death registration system, and answer any calls from families, mortuaries, vendors. I work closely with the investigations and the morgue downstairs and readily available to, you know, assist with the release here and there. Uh, so we do kind of work out of our uh, scope of daily duties or work assigned. So a little bit of everything. One last sip. Um, so my name is Galena Brown and I am administrative assistant extraordinaire. Thank you very much. Uh, so the, uh, in a typical day, um, we get phone calls from families and funeral homes. Um, we assist families in answering their questions. The most common question is, where do I start? What's the process? I've never done this before. And so we walk them through the process of uh, uh, getting with the funeral home and making arrangements, um, explain how long 
after an autopsy is done that it can take six to eight weeks for the autopsy report to be available. And we just go through that process with them. Funeral homes call to confirm information. They need to first verify that uh, who they're looking for is in our care. And then we work with the funeral home and coordinate the release of um, somebody's loved one into the funeral home's care. Um, other questions range from, my loved one is missing, do you have them? We get that one quite frequently. So we, uh, we will search our database just to see if they're in. Um, and sometimes they are here, but um, that's not quite, that's not very frequent, but uh, it is something that does happen. Uh, my name is Steve Castro. I'm the operations supervisor here at the coroner's office. I, um, I deal with the budget, I deal with the grants, um, media requests, uh, DNA requests, and basically I just keep the office running. Uh, I usually distribute it uh, upon request from media outlets, but I also um, am transparent with our homicide cases in the city and county of Denver. A uh, favorite part about my job is probably when I come to work in the morning, I have no idea what's in store for me. Uh, I make a plan that I'm going to attend certain meetings, uh, maybe have to go to court um, and, uh, and get some paperwork done and answer emails and phone calls. And usually uh, when I arrive, that plan uh, has to change because whatever cases came in over the night will have to be dealt with and amongst the uh, other doctors, we will uh, each uh, take uh, a certain number of cases and perform autopsies uh, and or external examinations or chart reviews. And, and you just really never know uh, what the night will bring uh, into the office, uh, whether it's going to be a, uh, a homicide case where uh, there's police involvement and uh, you know there's high scrutiny on the case and you're likely to be testifying in court or whether it's uh, a case of someone who's been missing for uh, weeks or months and has now uh, possibly been found and uh, we're going to try to identify the remains and bring closure to the family uh, or whether it's a, a case of somebody doing something very foolish and uh, ending up in our spaces for an autopsy uh, because of bad judgment uh, and or perhaps uh, altered mental status due to an intoxication. My favorite part of the job is helping people, helping people through the uh, one of the hardest times in their life that they have to uh, go through and not know where to begin. So I enjoy being there and just kind of guiding them through the process. So that's that's my favorite part of the job. Uh, my favorite part is that every day is a little different. Um, this profession is dynamic, so. To some degree every day is the same, but we get cases that are all across the board. So I've seen a lot of different stuff and it's been fascinating and every day is something new. And you don't really know what you can expect. Well, there are so many things I enjoy about being a forensic pathologist. Um, I really enjoy serving the community of Denver. I like knowing that there's a purpose behind what I do. So I find it very fulfilling that it's uh, a job where um, not only does my diagnosis um, go into a blank uh, of a death certificate, but it also serves many purposes within the public health arena um, any epidemiologic studies done in the future for the city of Denver um, use that information. And I find that the first and foremost impor most important thing that I do. Um, it's the best of both worlds. It's uh, you're not a cop so you don't have to put up with any of the bad stuff that uh, the cops uh, have to put up with, but we still get to go into people's houses and, and look into their private lives. So it's, it's an interesting job. My favorite part of the job is just the people that I work with. I, I really enjoy talking to them every day about their weekends, their, what they plan in the afternoon, and just um, their work day and just the everyday work problems that we all face and we work through every day. A uh, favorite part of my job is uh, when we find the definite evidence uh, that the doctor needs to get a cause of death. That way we can give that family the closure that they need. 
Um, my favorite part is the people. I love being around everyone here. They're um, super honest and caring um, and they're fun to be around.